thinking about forces, we can now actually analyze what happens to an object that is inside of a fluid, meaning it's, if it's submerged inside that fluid, or if it's actually even floating on top of it. So the first thing to think about is Archimedes' principle, which says that the buoyant force acting on an object is equal to the magnitude of the weight so it's equal to the magnitude of the weight of the fluid displaced by that object. So B would be then equal to, B for the buoyant force, is equal to the mass of the fluid displaced times gravity. Now, in thinking about a liquid, one of the most important things to think about is the density of that liquid and its volume. So let's put that in there instead of the mass. So it says that B is equal to the density of the fluid, lowercase rho here, the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid times our gravitational acceleration, or acceleration due to gravity there, our g. Okay? So that would be the buoyant force that any object would experience. Okay. So if the object is totally submerged, okay, so some object here that's totally submerged in some tank of something, um, totally. Then let's look at the forces acting on this. We have the buoyant force going up, and we have the weight force of our object going down. And we can look at the relationship of these two things and see what their net f net is to figure out what the net force is acting on this to know if this object is going to rise, to float, or if it's going to sink, or if it might stay where it is. Okay, so the sum of our forces would be our B minus mg okay. and let's put this in terms of densities like we were just uh, like we were just doing before. So the buoyant force is equal to rho fluid times V fluid times G and the mass times gravity here, we, the gravitational acceleration, we want to take the mass and change that into a density as well. So that would be the density of the object, that is the volume of the object, times G. Okay. So let's write that over here. The sum of our forces is equal to Rho, rho fluid times V fluid times G minus rho object times V object times G. Now, if this is totally submerged in here, then the fluid displaced, the volume of that fluid displaced, is equal to the volume of the object. So I can put that in there. So that's rho fluid times V object times G minus rho object times V object times G. Okay. So, if I factor out what's common here, that means I end up with rho fluid minus rho object times V object times G. Okay. So, that means we can then analyze this and see what the behavior is. So, if uh, because this equals our net force. So this equals our mass times our acceleration. Okay, so let me rewrite that up here so there's more room. 
So our net force is equal to our behavior, our mass times acceleration. So if rho fluid is bigger than rho object, then our A has to be positive, okay, because this will be a positive number. Therefore, the acceleration means it's positive, which means it will go up. So it will actually float. Okay. If instead the rho fluid is less than the rho for the object, then our A is actually going to be negative because this quantity here, this is smaller than this, which means this will be a negative. So that means that it will actually sink. If you could end up making your object's density be the same, then the acceleration is going to be zero. It's going to stay where it is. So if you're trying to make something stay at a certain level in the water, then you're going to have to actually make its volume, I mean, not its volume, its density equal to the density of the fluid. Okay, otherwise, things are going to float, things are going to sink, things are going to rearrange. Okay. If you are in the situation where something is partially submerged, okay, then we can still look at this, but now what we know is that it's already floating, it's not going anywhere in this vertical direction, and so it's in a static equilibrium, so the sum of the forces would be equal to zero. Okay. So the forces acting on this, again, are the buoyant force of the water, and then the gravitational force that's pulling down on the actual object that's sitting there. And those two things are going to be equal. If it's in this state where it's partially submerged and floating in the top portion of that fluid. So that means that B minus mg is equal to zero. Okay. And this B here would be, again, the density of our fluid times the volume of the fluid that is displaced okay, by Archimedes' principles. So the volume of the fluid that is displaced times G minus the density of the object times the volume of the object times gravity. And we know that's going to be equal to zero. So these things will cancel. And what this means is that we can figure out the volume of an object based on how much fluid it displaces, if we know the densities of the objects. So let me rewrite this over here. Rearranging this equation gives us rho fluid uh, over rho object times V fluid is equal to V object. So if you were trying to actually figure out what the velocity of your object is, and not velocity, volume of your object is, then you would measure the volume of the fluid that's been displaced and multiply that by the ratio of the densities of the objects. Okay. And so an object that would be floating on the surface would have a smaller density than this. And so that means this number is bigger than 1, which means that the volume of the object will be bigger, actually, than the volume of fluid displaced by the amount of that ratio. But this is, these are some things to think about with regard to fluids, and just thinking about the forces that are going into making things float, making things move in, in, the, in the water, in some kind of liquid. Um, but that's all that we're going to be talking about fluids, and actually this is going to be the last video for the semester, since now you're all going to start studying for the final exam that is next week.